Nancy and welcome to Icon Apprentice. This is our first in a series of four tutorials that we'll be doing to paint the icon St. Mary Magdalene. And first I want to show you the color copy. It is courtesy, the image was created and uh, I was allowed to use it from my teacher and mentor Jody Cole and you can check out her website. It's in the description box where you can look at her website. But this is the color copy. This is St. Mary Magdalene, and I suggest that you print this out because it will be a nice reference photo. You can use photo paper to print it out. Uh, if you download it to uh, your phone or flash drive, you can go to Staples and have it copied, or you can copy it on your own printer. I suggest doing that. What you're looking for is the ability to see the highlights and where we're going to put different colors. And it'll just be a reference for you as we go through. Or you can save it to your desktop and keep it on your computer. That may be easier for you. The other thing I want to show you is our line drawing. That's also downloadable from my website, iconapprentice.com. And I printed this just on plain paper because I wanted you to be able to see it really well. I'll give you a close-up and you can see, you can see the lines there. This is the paper I suggest you print it on for our project. This is our tracing paper, and you can see how transparent this is. This will lay down over the board very nicely. You'll be able to see where you're putting it and apply all the lines with that. And remember, I said red pencil, because as we trace this, you want to be able to see what line have I applied to the board, what line have I not applied to the board. All right, the other thing is your foam applicator. Make sure you have that handy. <clears throat> a pencil. <clears throat> a brush liner. You want the brush liner because we're going to transfer using our burnt umber paint. We'll transfer uh, the burnt umber and we'll trace the lines that we've applied to the board so that they're really dark and we can see them well when we start painting. The other thing you're going to need is your uh, yellow oxide. Uh, mix. And remember I said mix this with um, your glazing medium. Uh, the glazing medium helps it adhere to the board better. And uh, what you're going to do is when you mix that with your glazing medium or your matte medium, whichever you decide to use, you want to bring it to the consistency of uh, cream, at least a cream, uh, maybe a little bit toward milk, between milk and cream. You know there's a difference. If you look at water on a plate, you look at a little piece of a uh, little dab of milk on the on a plate, you're going to see there's a different consistency there. So uh, we want to go toward the milk consistency and then get a little bit thicker uh, toward a cream, but not so creamy that it's th that it's difficult to spread. So if you're getting my meaning, hopefully I'll show you in a minute here. I'll put some on a plate and hopefully uh, show you exactly what it's going to look like. Uh, you're going to need your cork-backed ruler, okay, and the reason you need the pencils because we're going to make borders across our icon board. Uh, you'll need something to keep your water in, and honestly, what I usually do, I use the empty yogurt cups. I just save them, wash them out, or if you could buy fruit in the small cups, those are great just to have as a water source. Um, you're going to need a plate. Uh, and you're going to need some uh, paper towels. So uh, let me open my board up and let's get started. With the panel I'm using today, I purchased at Artboards. It's a gessoed panel. Interglow has a little bit better price, but then I had to wait a little bit longer for the Interglow panels to come. Uh, but these are nice panels. I, I don't want you to think they're not nice, but they were a little bit more expensive. So here I have the board. You can see here's the board, here's the side we're going to paint on. This board actually comes with little divots in the back that uh, show you, you know, where you can hang it on the wall. I usually don't use those. I usually put wire, uh, hook and eye, and wire on the back. Okay. So, this is the top, this is the bottom for right now, and we're going to start applying our paints. <coughs> stuck. So 
So I just want you to, if you can see the consistency of this, you can see what I'm talking about. It's a little bit more of a cream, but it's not really heavy cream. And that's what we're going to be putting on our board today, and we're going to be using that uh, foam applicator. Get the paint on our foam applicator, and we're just going to start laying that down. take our paper towel and we're going to just start blotting. And what we're doing is we're just adding texture to the board, just giving it a nice mottled look. If you don't like something, look, think it looks too streaky, add a little bit more paint. I think I'm good with that. The sun came out. I don't know if you can see. You can see the texture of the paint. All right, that's what it's supposed to look like. All right, so we're going to let this dry. And once this is dry, then we're going to apply our line drawing. While our board dries, I want to tell you just a little bit about um, iconography and why the images may seem a little bit cartoonish. If you look at the line drawing that we have, you can see that there's, there's in that image there's really nothing uh, natural about uh, how she looks. It's, it's, she's almost like a cartoon. She's beautiful, but she's, it's not a portraiture. And the reason is because in iconography, we're looking into the spiritual world. We're, we're painting through prayer uh, what is in the spiritual realm rather than what is in the physical realm. But the spiritual image of that person, it's the uncreated light of God that we're observing. And uh, there's also a different perspective from iconography. We're looking into that picture and we're observing the details, and so our reality is going into that reality. And what happens with iconography is that the spiritual realm is coming into our world, and that's why often you'll see that halo. Um, sometimes the halo can pierce the outer border of the icon, and that represents the spiritual coming into our world. Um, at this point, let's do something that all iconographers do, which is we pray before we begin our work, our project. And what we do is we ask for special intentions. And those special intentions can be yours or someone else's, or it can be a world intention. It does not have to be anything specific. It's whatever you would like to pray about and paint into or write your prayer into your icon. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless everyone who's watching this video. We ask you to bless the work of their hands. We ask that the prayers and intentions that are being painted and written into this icon will benefit all those that it is intended for. For your special intentions now, everyone, please offer up whatever you would like to pray for. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptations, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. There's not, there's not a definite, there is an infinite amount of prayer that can go into an icon. Let's see if our board's dry, and we'll get started. So our board is dry, and at this point, we're going to need a piece of tracing paper. It's really important that you see the difference between the front side and the back side. See, it's a little bit shinier. That's the side you want to place down. So we're going to uh, need that, and we'll need our ruler because we're going to place a three-quarter inch border all the way around. So we'll go through that and trace that out. Just put some marks for your three-quarter inch just here and there. in our lines. Use a light touch. These don't have to be really dark. We just want to see them. Are you able? Yeah, you can see. It's faint, but it's there. Now, here's where we decide how, which is going to be the top, which is going to be the bottom. I kind of like the design that kind of accidentally occurred on this end of the board rather than this end of the board. I think this is going to be my top. The reason I'm choosing that is because when I put the line drawing on, most of this, most of this bottom part is going to be covered up by her robes. So I'm not going to worry too much about that and the border. But up here in this area is going to be showing. I kind of want... Um, the really neat designs that are on the board. I want those to show through more. So this is going to be the top of my board. You decide what's better for you. I'm liking that. I think that's pretty good. So you're going to need some tape. I get painter's tape and I just tape the edges because what I want to do is I want to stabilize this line drawing on the board so that it doesn't move around while I'm transferring the lines. And that's going to be really important. So tape it to your board. Don't worry about the paint. Remember, we put that glazing medium on there. And then remember, shiny side's going to go down so that as we transfer the line drawing, we're not missing anything. Now, you are not going to trace, we are not going to trace the halo line. That halo line's going to be created with our compass once we have all the other lines transferred on. But everything else, except for the name, I would wait because, uh, well, you can know you can trace the name. I think I was thinking we might put another color on the background, but I think we're not. We're just going to leave this showing through. So go ahead and transfer the name. Uh, to be honest, I start with the face first. The reason I start with the face first is because by the end of tracing, my hand can get tired. I can start to lose a little bit of control. So I usually will try to draw the face on before I draw the rest of it. And my hand is still fresh. I'm still kind of in control. Just to make sure that that line drawing is transferring down on before I go too far, make sure it's transferring down onto the board. That way you're not wasting a lot of time, right? Okay. 